Hey everyone, what I'm going to show you is an even more inappropriate way to use the machine behind me. But this doesn't make it any less fun. Let's mill some steel. Cheers! And I tell you right away why. Without going into details, milling metal and stone are different processes. In the case of metal, this is cutting. These are blades. In the case of stone, this is destruction. You can think of these diamonds as the little hammers. As stone milling is in many ways similar to working with a hammer and a chisel. This explanation isn't very scientific, but I'm not going to write a scientific article. I just want us to be on the same page. So, for effective metal milling, the machine spindle must have enough torque, which this machine doesn't have. Also, the machine must have as much rigidity as possible, which this machine doesn't have, and a high level of accuracy, which this machine doesn't have. So, overall, the smartest thing to do would be to simply order the part from the professional workshop. But I have a good reason to do it myself. The part that I'm going to make must be not only functional, but also beautiful. With this detail, I'm going to set the tone for the whole rebuild. And those workshops that can produce what I want are either very busy or very expensive, or both. Now, let me show you what I mean. I machine the second side in the same way as the first one, and this is what I came up with. 
I'll start with the flaws. From the machinist's point of view, the part is very inaccurate. In some places, the sizes varies up to 3 tenths of a millimeter due to tool deviation. So I left these intolerances in the first pass and then make several spring passes. The processing also wore out 14 cutters. Quite a lot, but I use inexpensive carbide mills from a local manufacturer, so they are not very costly. Also, in my case, they are more forgiving in terms of resistance to beating than, let's say, expensive well-known brands. In some places, I will deliberately finish the part by hand to match the casting of the machine, so there is no need for high precision. This is my first complex steel milling attempt, so there is some room for improvement. I think I can get rid of most of the chatter and make my setup much more rigid by raising the workpiece closer to the spindle instead of lowering the spindle all the way to the bottom. As for the rest, I am happy with how everything turned out. All that remains is a little manual processing, painting, varnishing and assembly. Now, why am I doing this? Maybe I have reached a certain age, or got that amount of work experience when I enjoy not only working with the tool, but it is also important what kind of tool it is, and I want it to be beautiful. Though I'm not the one of those who say that the grass was greener before and so on, but it's obvious that there was more beauty in old instruments than there is now. Today is about practicality, today is about efficiency, and I'm okay with that. But I also want some space for beautiful things without the need, just because they are beautiful. And I decide that I can do this instead of whining about how awesome the tools used to be. And who doesn't want a huge heavy machine decorated with steel skulls? So, I've decided not just make a CNC machine, but also make it as insane as I possibly can. So, this part is kind of a teaser of how I want to rebuild the whole machine. Right now I'm preparing its design, and I will present it to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, thumb up and leave a comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. This will really help me to continue doing what I've started and take it to the next level. Enjoy the rest of the video. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I'll see you in two weeks.